Should you play EverQuest? Right now, today, should you download the game and roll up a new character live or a progression server, or perhaps a slightly different <laughs> server? I've been part of the EverQuest community since really before I had a beard, or even knew that I could grow a beard. I was a fan of the game right about the start of Kunark, but it's not without its flaws, especially in today's day and age, when you have a lot more options than you did when I first started playing EverQuest. There's a lot of reasons to play, and there's a lot of reasons not to. But do I think you should play right now? Maybe. Before we answer the question of should you play the game or not, we have to point out that there are essentially three ways to play this game, and each is going to provide you with a very different experience. This is your choose your own adventure before you even log in. The three types are Project 1999 for the most hardcore classic experience, EverQuest progression servers for the game historians who want to see what it felt like to go through EverQuest on maximum speed, and EverQuest Live where players yell angrily at progression servers for taking so much of the team's resources, and get first crack at new content, like yearly expansions. Each of these versions of EverQuest will have different barriers to entry, whether it's cost or time, and different rewards for how you play. We'll start with EverQuest Live. EverQuest, like Clockwork, is launching its 24th expansion in December of 2022. This expansion will bring 7 new zones, new raids, quests, missions, spells, abilities, and AAs as expected. But one big highlight for this is for trade skillers, and it makes me think of Guild Wars 2 and Elder Scrolls Online. The Trade Skill Component Depot. This depot will be 250 stacked items that can be shared across your character like a shared bank. Quick note here that you can have more stacked items if you buy one of the higher packages. Additionally, the expansion page states that these slots ignore standard stack sizes and can hold significantly more, and they can be accessed from anywhere in the world while crafting. This is more a modern convenience feature that I hope more games will add in the future, and it's something I really didn't expect to come to EverQuest, so it's a welcome thing, at least to me. EverQuest Live is in many ways the intended way to play the game, and before fans of Project 1999 and progression servers come to me, let me, let me explain. I say this largely due to two reasons. Historically, balancing changes for classes appear to have been made with live servers in mind. This was abundantly clear during the DOT revamps, which caused tremendous imbalances at lower levels on Finigil, but were largely ignored because they worked on live. You know, I'm totally not at all frustrated by that, you know, having played a Necromancer for so many years on Finigil, and then the DOT revamp came at the end of that server's lifespan when I had switched over to Berserker. I have I have no I have no no gripes about it at all. The fact that for a while, shamans were a better dot class than necromancers. No, that wasn't. That's not coloring my my experience here at all. Salty. But this is also where new content comes from. Every year, new expansions are launching for EverQuest, and new event quests may or may not be available on progression servers, depending on what era those servers are in. EverQuest Live still feels very much like the focus of Daybreak, and it will continue to be. It is the base game. It's the game we played back in 1999, just the continued progression of it. The other two methods to play EverQuest are actually alternatives to this. These are also routinely the servers that tend to have the highest population. I checked the status page a couple different times when I was trying to make this video to see what the server populations were. Out of the 26 servers, including the test server, there are 10 progression servers currently. Only two progression servers appeared in the top five high population servers, Yelenak and Mischief. Even more so, of the 10 medium population servers, only one, Rizlona, was a progression server. Now there's a few different ways to think about this. Boxing, or rather playing multiple accounts on the same PC, I'm sure has had an impact on the numbers, but it's not like there aren't progression servers where you can box. Notably Ragefire and Rizlona, and recently, Vaniki with the relaxed Truebox code. So why play EverQuest Live? You can begin your journey for free. EverQuest has a decent free-to-play model with an optional cash shop for conveniences like experience potion and bags. Unlike other games though, inventory management and leveling were established long before the cash shop came in, and over the years both have actually gotten easier without extra paid assistance. 
you will likely want to subscribe as you gain levels due to mercenary restrictions and gear restrictions as well as some content restrictions, but there's still a lot of content you can experience for free. This is also where you'll be able to see the most up-to-date content, as long as you're high level. Most expansions for EverQuest now focus on the end game and expanding from there rather than leveling. So that's where the downside to live comes in. There is going to be a big gap between when you start and when you can play with others. It's very top heavy and the grind can be long and arduous. Even if you purchase the, the level 100 hero character, you're not at max level yet. If you want to group from level one, that's where you're going to want to look at the next method. Do you have $15 in your pocket? Are you really impatient for new content? Do you want to step on a treadmill and just never get off? Well, then EverQuest progression servers might be for you. EverQuest is not responsible for loss of sleep, appetite, dreams, friendships, family connections, real world social skills, or any potentially but not legally provable negative impacts caused by excessive grinding, raiding, or chrono farming. All liability rests solely on you, the person who chose to play through a game that originally launched in 1999. I mean, come on, year long expansions every three months? What did you expect? We do, however, apologize to family pets in advance for a lack of walkies and promise to send you an Ixar scented squeaky toy for only $19.99. Purchases are non refundable and non transferable. Thank you. Long before WoW Classic, EverQuest was cashing in on nostalgia with progression servers. The idea is simple start with the base game and gradually unlock content over years that has already released. Why would you want to do this, you may ask, besides the crippling fear of advancing time showing up in gray hairs and knees crackling? Well, perhaps there are expansions you missed, like me, when you jump to another game. Perhaps you want to revisit content at the time it was relevant. Sure, you can go kill Vulek on live, but the encounter would be a joke and the gear would be absolutely shit. EverQuest progression servers provide players with the opportunity to live through some of the most iconic expansions EverQuest has to offer, with new and old friends alike, and they are a version of the game that is near and dear to my heart, as I spent a very rewarding four years on the Finagil server from 2016 to 2020. As one of the top rating guilds, and I got to see and experience wealth of content and lore I never imagined I would. Progression servers are fine-tuned machines now as well. Experimentation over a decade and a half have brought them to their current state. I was there back in 2006 when the first progression servers launched, and they are unrecognizable by today's standards. There are currently 10 progression servers, each at different eras and many different quirks. The oldest of these servers still currently active is Ragefire, which predated the Agents of Chains edition, which came with Finagil, which made raiding more accessible in earlier expansions, and in my opinion, was really one of the best things that EverQuest could have done, alongside pick zones, which made new rushes on zones more palatable. The newest progression server is the dual launch of Yelenak and Veniki. Both of these servers will be testing out the new relaxed trueboxing code, server rules with Veniki adding in the addition of a level unlocking schedule instead of an expansion unlocking schedule. EverQuest progression servers tend to have about a four year lifespan, but the quality of life will vary based on the server. Finagil, for example, saw a steady decline from its launch for about three and a half years, but the last half year or so was, was kind of running on fumes. Other servers have felt empty within a few months of launch. There's no way to know which server will pop and which will wither. It's one of the downsides as when they do tend to, you know, get a little sparse in the population, EverQuest is a little bit slow in merging servers, or a lot of it slow, honestly. It's a couple years late in some cases. The biggest downside to these servers compared to the other two methods to play EverQuest mentioned in this video is that they have a cost to play upfront. Each progression server requires an active EverQuest subscription of $15 a month in order to play. There is simply no free to play option here. But if you want to experience the history of EverQuest as it was, or experience it in a brand new way with randomized loot or level locks, progression servers are where you want to be. The launch day of a new progression server, which happens every year, is a sight to behold. It's also your best bet for finding copious groups outside of active guilds. Progression server launches are just something else. That said, if you want a true classic experience, you're going to have to shift away from Daybreak's official offerings. Travel back in time with me to 1999. Jon Stewart just took over The Daily Show. This is Jon Stewart here in Waco, Texas for the- Futurama and Family Guy were in their inaugural seasons. Blockbuster was still a thing. Nobody has the movie I want. And people were getting upset online about Star Wars. 
I know it's hard to imagine. Shut up and take my money. After all, it's been 23 years. And so much has changed. But imagine with me, just, just step back in time to 1999. That's essentially what Project 99 does. Where progression servers may fail at recreating the day-to-day -day nostalgia of EverQuest when it was run by Verant Interactive, that's what P99 excels at, and also scaring me away. <laughs> I'm in danger! If you're looking for old spell effects and capped true to classic, or at least classic through Velius experience, Project 99 is where you should go. Project 1999 is pitched as a way to experience EverQuest as it was from 1999 to 2001. And the painstaking details they have gone to to recreate the experience is immense. Development started in 2008 and the servers in the first server released in 2009. As of this video, there are three servers, green, red, and blue. The red server is a PVP server, so if you're looking for that classic PVP experience, you're covered too. Project 1999, in fact, has been so well received, it's been officially recognized by Daybreak as a fan-based not-for-profit emulation project of the classic experience. Under this agreement, they do not need to fear legal repercussions from Daybreak. And as anyone who's watched MMOs for a while knows, emulation has always been a bit of a dicey area. While Project 1999 may be the most classically inspired, and to people like me who don't have the time to play a single MMO for as long as I used to be able to, a little intimidating, it also has the lowest barrier to entry. Project 99 is free. No cash shop, no chrono, no sub fee. Bounty code, this one was for you. Please correct anything I said wrong down there. So should you play EverQuest now? If you're looking for the next big action MMO, no. If you're looking for state-of-the-art graphics, no. If you're looking for innovation and new and exciting things, no. But if you want to see some of the history of how MMOs came to be, if you're looking for a social experience, if you're looking for a slower, more strategic game, of tab targeting with rich lore, more content than you would ever be able to consume completely, then EverQuest might be for you. If you're looking for a home while you wait for games that are in development like Pantheon Rise of the Fallen or Ashes of Creation, this might be a game for you to spend some time in. It's slower, but it's rewarding. There is a sense of fear and danger in most of the game and this is where some of the most incredible experiences I've had have come from. I'm not trying to say that EverQuest is the absolute best MMO out there. It's really not. The best MMO is going to be a point of preference. A lot of you watching will say that it is, and a lot of you watching will say that it's not. But if you should try it, that's the real question I'm trying to answer with this video. And if you can, if any of this that I just went over in any of the three styles of the game sounds appealing to you, give it a shot. And if you're looking for more, convincing of why EverQuest is what it is and what it brings to the table, why not take a look at this video here as I try and explain why we keep coming back to EverQuest. My name is Redbird Flynn, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.